It's been almost two years without any updates, but yes, the series lives on, my friends. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to add custom options and content fields to our Themes Customize Admin screen. It's hard to explain with words, so let's just jump right into a demo of the finished product that we will be building together. All right, so down in the footer, I want you to pay attention to this new light gray box. It's a call out that links to the about page, but let's imagine that I want it to link to the portfolio page instead and use different text and a different image. But let's also imagine that this is my website, but I'm not a web developer. Someone else coded this site for me and I just used the WordPress admin panel to manage the site. Well, all I would need to do to make those changes happen is jump over to the admin dashboard and under the appearance menu, click on customize. Now in our previous lesson, we set up this standard colors section to allow for customizable colors. And now in this lesson, you'll notice that we have a brand new footer callout section. So if I click on that, we can begin customizing the gray callout box. Let's begin by editing the headline to say, view our portfolio instead. So in this field, view our portfolio. We can see that the live preview gets updated on the fly. We can also update the paragraph text. So let's delete this and say example portfolio text. There we have it. Next, let's swap out this image of the elephants for an image of a dog. So within this image field, let's just click on change image. I'm going to upload an image file from my computer's hard drive. Once the image is uploaded, we then click this select button. And now WordPress will even let us crop the image and it will keep the perfect aspect ratio of height and width for us. That looks good. I'll click crop image. There we have it. And then finally, let's adjust this link field. This is where we define what page the visitor should be taken to when they click on this link or this link. So if we click on this field, we can choose from any of our pages in WordPress. Let's change this to portfolio. And we can even test that link out within the live preview. So we can see that that took us to the portfolio page. Perfect. So this looks good to me. I'm just going to click save and publish and we're done. So if I jump back over to my other tab, that's simply viewing the website and isn't in the admin panel. If I refresh, we see our latest changes have taken place. All right, so now that we've seen an example of the finished product, let's learn how to code a theme to have an editable area like this. So behind the scenes, I just reset my theme files back to the way they were from our previous lesson. So you and I are now on the same page. So let's code together to add back in the custom footer callout box. Let's begin by adding static dummy HTML content and styling it with CSS. Then once that's done, we can write PHP to actually make it dynamic. So let's jump into our text editors. Go ahead and open up your WordPress theme folder. And let's begin by hopping into the footer.php file. Right below this opening footer element, let's drop down to a new line and let's create a new div. We could give it a class of anything, but let's call it footer callout. Be sure to close that div. And within this new div, let's create another div for the image. So let's give it a class of footer callout image. And let's create another div for the text content. So div, we'll give it a class of footer callout text. And within this new text div, let's add a heading level two element. And let's just say placeholder heading. And let's also add a paragraph element with a bit of dummy lorem ipsum content. Let's go ahead and save this file. And if we refresh in the browser, we can see that that content desperately needs a bit of CSS attention. It could use a bit of styling. So at this point, let's jump back into our text editor and open up the style.css file. And let's scroll down to the very bottom of the file. And let's create a new comment just to stay organized and say footer callout section. 
Let's begin by selecting the overall div. It had a class of footer callout. Let's go ahead and give it a background color of gray. So background color. Let's use the hexadecimal value of DDD. Let's see how that looks in the browser. I think we could use a bit of extra spacing here. So let's give ourselves a bit of padding, let's say padding 20 pixels. And let's also use margin to push up on the top so that there's a vertical gap between this div and the content above it. So let's say margin 30 pixels on the top and we don't need any on the other three directions. That looks better. Next, let's set up the two column layout. So we want to use a selector that targets the two column divs. So remember the first one had a class of footer callout image. So let's float that to the left and give it a width of 30%. Let's select the other column. It had a class of footer callout text. Let's float it to the right and give it a width of 67%. And if both of these children divs are floated, we need to make sure that our parent div clears the floats. So back in our footer PHP with our HTML, on the main footer callout div, let's give it a secondary class of clear fix. Let's save this and also our CSS file. And if we check out the browser, we see a two column layout. So the image will take up this space once we add an image and our text is here, looks good. Let's fine tune these font sizes just a bit. So let's create a new rule and target footer callout text H2. So let's say that the heading should have a font size of 1.7 rem. And let's also make sure that its bottom margin isn't too large. So let's say margin. We don't need any on the top or the right, but on the bottom, let's just say 0.35 rem. And we don't need any on the left. That looks better. Let's increase the size of the paragraph text a bit. So let's create a new rule that targets footer callout text, any paragraph elements. Let's say font size 0.9 rem. That's a bit easier to read. Now that's enough HTML and CSS for now. Let's change gears and begin writing the PHP to make this content pull dynamically from WordPress data. To do that, let's jump back into our text editor and hop into our functions.php file. Let's scroll down to the very bottom. And just to stay organized, let's add a comment that says add footer callout section to admin appearance customize screen. The first thing we want to do is create a new function. We can name the function anything we'd like but it's a good idea to prefix the function name with our theme name. So that way the function doesn't conflict with any WordPress or plugin functions. So my theme name is learning WordPress. So I'll begin with LWP for short, and then I'll include an underscore and say footer callout. Open up a pair of parentheses and then a pair of curly brackets. And before we even write anything within the body of this function, Let's first drop down to a new line and tell WordPress exactly when we want it to run this new function. So on our new line, let's say add action. This takes two arguments. The first is the WordPress action that we want to hook on to. And the second argument is the name of the function that we want to run at that particular moment. So for the first argument, we want to tack on to the customize register action hook. That's a built-in WordPress native name. And then the second argument is simply the function that we just created. So we just type out the name of the function. All right, now we are ready to begin actually writing our function. So let's ask ourselves, what's the first thing that we want to do here? Well, we want to add a new section to the customize screen. So for example, in the WordPress admin dashboard, if we go back to appearance customize, we can see that there are currently five sections and we want to add another one for the footer callout. So back in our code, everything that we do is going to be tied to a WordPress native object named WP underscore customize. This is an object that the WordPress system ships with by default. 
and it contains a method that we can leverage named add section. We'll want to pass this two arguments. The first is the short name or variable name for the new section we want to create. And the second argument is an array with a few additional options. So first, let's provide a variable name for the new section. I will name it LWP footer callout section. All right, and then let's add a comma. And the second argument is an array. So let's open up an array. And in between the arrays parentheses, let's drop down to a new line just to stay organized. And within this array, the only property we need to set is the title property. This is the name of the section that will visually display in the admin panel. So let's just call it footer callout. And that's all we need to create a section. But we don't want the section to be empty. We want there to be a field for the headline, another field for the paragraph text, another field for the image, so on and so forth. Now in terms of our code, for each field that we want to create, we'll need two things, a setting and a control. Think of those two things as a pair. The setting is where data will be stored in our database for a field, and the control is the text box that users actually see in the admin panel and type text into. So for example, let's begin by creating a setting and control pair for this headline. So in our code, let's drop down to a new line. Let's begin with the WP customize object once again. And this time we want to leverage a method that it contains named add setting. We will also want to pass this method two arguments. The first argument is the variable name that we want to create for this setting. Let's just call it LWP footer callout headline. And the second argument is an array with a few additional options. Within the parentheses for the array, let's drop down to a new line to stay organized. And within this array, we can provide a few properties. So if we want, we can provide a default value. So when the user first sees this field in the customized screen, we can set things up so the field already has a value. So we could say example headline text. All right, that's all we need for the headline setting. Now let's create the headline control. So again, we want to begin with the WP customize object. And this time we want to leverage a method that it has named add control. The code for creating a control is a bit different. So in this case, we want to create a new instance or a new object that is based on the WP customize control class. So open up a pair of parentheses and this constructor function takes three arguments. The first argument is simply the WP customize object. The second argument is the variable name that we want to give this control. So I will name it LWP footer callout headline control. And the third argument is an array with a few additional options. So let's create an array, open up a new pair of parentheses. In between that new pair of parentheses, let's drop down to a new line to stay organized. And within the array, the first property that we want to create is named label. So this is the text that will label the headline field. So we want it to say headline. The next property we want to set is named section. Obviously we want this control to live within the section that we just created a few minutes ago. So we will reference that section variable name. So down here we just type in LWP footer callout section. Let me scroll down a bit so we can see what we're doing. And then we want to add a comma and add a third property named settings. And this is where we tell WordPress that the value that the user enters into this field or this control should be saved into this setting in the database. So for the setting property, we just set it to equal LWP footer callout headline, because that's the name of the setting that we created just a moment ago. All right, now before we save this file and test what we have so far, if we are going to use the WP customize object, we need to make sure that we can actually access it from within our function. To be able to access it, all we need to do is pass it as a parameter within our main function's parentheses. So here we just include dollar sign WP 
customize. All right, now let's save this file and jump back into our admin dashboard and revisit the appearance customize screen. So here we see that we successfully added the new footer callout section. And if we click on it, there's the headline field and it even has the default value that we set. Now currently, if I change this to testing the field, we see that in the live preview, the headline text did not update. And that's because we never updated our footer PHP file, our HTML, to tell it to pull from the database. So our next step is to simply jump in to footer.php. Here is that headline element. And let's hollow out its value. So let's delete this. And instead, drop into PHP. And we can use the WordPress function named git theme mod. And then we just supply the variable name of the setting that we want. So remember, we named it LWP footer callout headline. Now this git theme mod function will successfully retrieve that value, but we don't just want to store the value in memory. We want to actually echo it out onto the page. So let's save this. And if we refresh in the admin panel, now if we go into footer callout and attempt to change this, testing one, two, three, the live preview actually updates. Perfect. So that takes care of the headline. Now let's work on the paragraph. So back in our text editor, let's jump back into functions.php. So we created a setting and control pair for the headline. Now we want to create a setting and control pair for the paragraph. Now we can save ourselves a ton of typing by just copying and pasting this pair that we just wrote and then simply modifying a few things here and there. So let's copy the setting and control that we just set up, copy it to our clipboard, and then let's drop down a few lines and then just paste it in again. All right, so within the new copy of the setting that we just pasted, let's change the variable name from headline to text. It's not really necessary, but we can change the default value to example paragraph text. All right, let's adjust the control. So we want to change the variable name. So instead of being called headline control, we can just call it text control. Let's change the label to just be text. We can leave the section value as is because we want it to live in the same section, but let's be sure to update the settings value. So let's change this from headline to text. And let's actually add a comma here because we want to include another property named type. Now by default, a control will be a single line text field, but for this paragraph text, we want a multi-line text area. So we can just set the type to text area. Let's save this file, but before we test things out in the admin panel, let's first jump into footer.php and update our HTML. So let's remove this entire paragraph element that is static, and instead let's drop into PHP and echo out the results of the git theme mod function. And we want to retrieve the setting that is named LWP footer callout text. Let's go ahead and save this file and then jump back into our admin. So now if we jump into footer callout, we see our paragraph field testing the paragraph field. So in the live preview, we see that that is successfully updated but that text looks especially small. And that's because it currently isn't being wrapped in P or paragraph tags. So to fix that, we can just jump back to our HTML and we can wrap this within a built-in WordPress function that will parse plain text and return it as HTML that uses paragraph tags. So let's wrap this in a function named WP Auto P. Be sure to include an extra closing parentheses here. And then let's save this file and refresh in the admin panel. We can see that text is now a bit larger because it's successfully using paragraph tags. So if we go back into that field, we can add a bit of extra text. And then even if we drop down to a new line, it will be converted to HTML without any problems. All right, so that takes care of the heading and the paragraph. Next, let's create a link field that will let the admin choose which page visitors should be taken to if they click on this text or the image. 
So back in our text editor, let's jump into functions.php. To avoid as much typing as possible, let's just copy this last setting and control pair, copy it to our clipboard, drop down, paste it in again. Let's change this setting from text to link. In this case, we actually don't need to provide a default value, so let's delete that. And if that's the case, we actually don't even need to provide this array argument, so we can delete that. All right, let's adjust this control for our link field. So let's change the variable name from text control to link control. Change the label to link. Section can stay the same. Let's be sure to change settings so it saves to the right place in the database. Change this from text to link. And perhaps most importantly, let's change the type to drop down pages. If we use this exact type name, WordPress will take care of everything else. So let's save this file and then jump back into footer.php. And let's turn our headline element into a link. So within the H2, let's open up an A tag with an href attribute. For now, we can leave it blank. And then right before the closing H2 tag, let's add a closing A tag. Now let's go ahead and fill out the href value. So let's drop into PHP. And then we want to echo out the value of git theme mod. And the setting name was LWP footer callout link. Let's go ahead and save this file and then refresh our admin panel to test it out. So if we go back into footer callout, here's the new link field. And we can choose between any of our WordPress page entries. Just to test things out, let's set it to the contact us page. And let's click on this link just to test it out. We see no content found, so it looks like something isn't working quite right. If we hover over this link, if you look in the bottom left corner of my browser, you can see the status bar that tells us where this link is pointing to. And we can see that it's really just returning a value of six. And that's because the post or page ID of the contact us page is the number six. So all we need to do to convert that ID number into a usable link is go back into our code and wrap this get theme mod function in another function named get permalink. And be sure to include the extra closing parentheses here. Let's go ahead and save this file and refresh in the admin. And now if we click on the link, it successfully takes us to the page that we specified, the contact us page. Next, let's work on adding a field so users can upload an image. So back in the text editor, let's jump into the functions.php file. Let's copy and paste the last setting and control pair so we don't have to type it all out again. So copy, drop down a few lines and paste it in again. Let's change this copy from link to image. Let's change the control variable name from link to image. Update the label. Section can stay the same. Be sure to update the settings from link to image. And we want this to be an image upload field, not a drop down pages field. So let's delete this line entirely. And WordPress actually has a dedicated class for creating image upload controls. So instead of using this generic WP customize control class, let's delete that and replace it with WP customize cropped image control. And this class will even let us specify an exact width and height aspect ratio for the image. So it will force admin users to crop the image to meet the ratio we set. So for example, we can say width 750 and height 500. Obviously you could set any width and height aspect ratio you want. This is just an example, but let's save this file and refresh the admin panel. Here we can see the new image field. Let's select an image. I'll upload a new image from my computer. I'll use this photo of the beach. Once I select the photo, WordPress will ask me to crop it to match the aspect ratio. That looks good. Now we just need to update our footer template to actually output that image source. So back in our text editor, let's jump into footer.php. Remember we set up this empty div column for the image. So within that div, 
Let's create an image element. Let's fill out the source attribute. To do that, we'll drop into PHP. And we want to echo out the result of git theme mod. The name of the image setting is LWP footer callout image. Now on its own, this function will return a numerical ID value for the image or media object that we just uploaded. But in this case, for the image source attribute, we don't want an ID number. We want the actual URL to the JPEG file. So what we can do is wrap this function within another function named WP git attachment URL. Be sure to add the extra closing parentheses here. Let's save this file and refresh the admin panel. And there's the image. And finally, before we bring this lesson to a close, what if the admin user decides that they don't want to display this footer box at all? So to address that, let's create one final field that asks the user, do you want to display this section? And then they can choose between values of yes or no. So to set that up, back in our text editor, let's jump into functions.php and let's scroll up to the top of the section that we've been working on in this lesson. So here's the comment that we added to stay organized. And here is our main overall function. Just below that, here is our first pair of a setting and a control. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this setting and control pair. And then let's add a few new lines above that pair and paste our clipboard in. Let's update the setting name from headline to, let's just call it display. It controls whether the user wants to display the section or not. Let's set the default value to no. Next, let's update the control variable name from headline to display. Let's also update the label to display this section, question mark. Section can stay the same. Let's update settings from headline to display. And most importantly, let's add another property that tells this control what type it should be. So type equals a select element, a drop down, And then we want to add another property that lists the available choices. So let's create an array of choices. The first option is no, which will have a value of no. And the second option is obviously yes, so that's the label, and it has a value of yes. Let's go ahead and save this file and then jump into our footer.php. And we only want to display this footer callout content if the user answers yes to that display field question. So let's just wrap this entire bit of content in a PHP if statement. So drop into PHP only if the value of git theme mod, remember the field name was LWP footer callout display. So only if the value of that equals yes, do we want to display any of this markup. So let's add an opening curly bracket here. And then this is where the content ends. So on this line, let's drop into PHP again and close out that curly bracket. And that will do the trick. So let's save this and refresh in the admin panel. Here is the new field. So by default, it's set to no, and we no longer see the footer box. But as soon as we set this to yes, we see that the footer box is displayed once again. Perfect. And that's actually going to bring this lesson to a close. In our next lesson, we'll learn how to create an about the author box for single blog post and page screens. Should be a lot of fun to set up, and I'll see you then. I also want to let you know that just last week, I published a new video course. The purpose of the course is to bridge the gap between a basic understanding of HTML and CSS and the skill set that employers are looking for when hiring web developers. I've paced the tempo of the course so that just about anyone can follow along. The only prerequisite is basic HTML and CSS knowledge, and here's what we are going to learn. Git and GitHub so we can collaborate with other developers. Node.js tools like NPM and Gulp. You may already have a strong understanding of CSS, but we are going to take it to another level. Mobile first performance so our sites will load super quickly. JavaScript will cover ES6 basics and how to use tools like Babel and Webpack. We'll learn about the basics of object-oriented programming with JavaScript. And we'll also cover the popular module pattern. Finally, we'll talk about jobs how to get more interviews, how to interview well, 
and how to continue progressing in your career. If this sounds like something you're interested in, there's a link to the course in the description. If not, as always, stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials.